Hey guys, this is Mike with GoGamer.com. We're here at CES 2010 at the Razer booth. We're here checking out the new Razer motion system for PC. And Scott here is going to show us a little bit about it. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what it is right, right off the top of the bat? So this is the 6 Sense True Motion Dev Kit. It uses magnetic tracking for full 1 to 1, 6 degree of freedom movement. So you can go along all 6 axes in position and in rotation. It knows position to about 1 millimeter and it knows rotation to 1 degree. Well, show, show me what you can do. Alright, so you can grab the world with either hand and move it. You can do rotations just by very simply moving. You can also do scaling. Then you can do more fancy stuff. Like if I go over here, I can pick up this object. And I can take a cut out of this floor. Oh, wow. You can also very easily scale objects if I grab this one. So it's like you took your hands are pretty much there, picking things up, stretching them out, yeah. shrinking them in. Exactly. If you have 3D goggles or something, it really you just feel like your hands are in the screen. Hey, we're here with Josh at the Razer booth again. We're going to check out the actual gameplay with the new Sixth Sense controllers here. So, um, Josh, can you tell me about, um, we're going to use Left 4 Dead, right? Yeah, so this is uh, Valve's Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, this took about a week of work going up to Valve and uh, getting controls ready for the game. Um, so, this is uh, just a simple like gesture-based control system for the game with some pretty neat one-to-one uh, -one features for the melee combat. So, you guys um, partnered with Valve to actually create this demo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were... Valve has been a huge help in uh, getting everything rolling on this, so uh, we have pretty much all the games on the Source engine uh, just about ready to go for first-person shooter controls and stuff like that. So, okay, so um, so I'm gonna take a shot at this. How do you control the character in the game? Okay, so uh, it's a two-controller configuration right now. Uh, the right controller controls uh, vision and where you're looking, like uh, your mouse would, and the left controller is mostly uh, gestures and uh, movement controls. So. Uh, you know, you tilt down to crouch, tilt up to jump, push forward to jab. Hey, this is Mike. We're at the Razer booth again with Christopher here. We're looking at the first ever Razer Xbox controller. So Razer's taking their expertise in gaming and applying it to the console. So this is the, um, so what's the official name for this? This is a Razer Answer, our, our professional gaming grade Xbox 360 controller. Um, and we made a couple of changes to the original controller here on that one. So what you see is basically, uh, first of all, you can adjust the tension on these analog sticks. So there's actually like little wheels beneath the analog Correct. 6. Absolutely. And you just turn them in any direction to make it looser or stiffer. Very easy to, to adjust it. Depending on, on what genre you really want to play. For example, like Halo players used to, like they, they usually want a much looser analog stick than maybe uh, people that play dr driving games. Actually, we heard from a lot of pl players that they actually, when they buy a new controller, they borrow it to a friend and then for like six months or so and then they only get it back. So the, the analog stick is a lot looser when they when they when they use it. So it's just the tension on the stick. So Correct. so for the driving game, if you want it to make it less sensitive, yeah, for, for more stability. It's not, yeah, you make it just a, a lot uh, tighter, so it doesn't move that fast, and you don't oversteer as easily. Correct. But then for FPS, if you want to move right away, just loosen yeah, it. Yeah, correct. Up. correct. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay. So I mean, it looks it's like a black version of the Xbox controller. It has some yeah. cool light lighting to it. Absolutely, it's edge lit. Um, we we did a few changes on the on the on the overall design on the shape. You can feel it. It's easy to actually feel it then you can see it because on the first side it looks a bit like that. Um, and it has the, the classic razor kind of like the, the rubberized we kind of the feel. Non-slip rubber grip yeah. like uh, we have in our mouse. The other thing that we uh, we ported from our mouse, mouse uh, is basically our hyper response buttons which is um, basically uh, um, a bit improved technology on the switches and on the buttons which uh, gives you better tactile feedback. And yeah, I heard kind of a click almost. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it feels oh. a little bit like a mouse. Thing. You so can just get a better tactile feedback, you, and they are actuated a lot faster than... So do actually like individual springs like beneath each one? Or? Yeah, correct. yeah there's, there's a special switch under each of these buttons, correct? That, that's cool. 
So you got, so we got, you got a, a programmable trigger right here. We got um, these, these basically individually actuated buttons. Correct. Which is which is really cool. Now the D-pad is a little, actually, bit, a little bit different. Uh, this is still not the final D-pad. We're okay. actually gonna have an improved D-pad because there, there's been a lot of complaints about the uh, actual um, D-pad in the Xbox 360 controller. So we gonna improve it a lot in a different direction so that you got a more like four distinct uh, buttons on on the controller, which uh, should be, yeah, that's something that we've seen on the wish list of a lot of programs that we've worked with. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's something that you can't see in this controller, but this is still not a final design, but it's going to be in the final product. So we just had the hands-on with the new controller here. The resistance controls were really impressive. I'm not the best Halo player in the world, but when I was able to tweak the sensitivity on the fly, um, it definitely made my aiming a lot better. So I'm looking forward to checking it out when it comes to the market. And if you guys want to get some more information on Razor.com, check it out on there. So we're here at the Razor booth again, checking out the last product they have, They're, and they've had a great lineup so far. Um, we're here to check out the new headset, it's a wireless headset, uh, gaming headset here. So Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Okay, um, what we got here is a Razer Chimera. Um, it's a semi-wireless 5.1 virtual surround sound headset. So I'm saying semi-wireless because um, I don't know how many of our, your viewers know that, but the, the audio in the Xbox is split in two parts really. It's the in-game audio and the voice communication. Um, so for the in-game audio, if you just want to just want to play by your own, um, it's an entirely wireless headset. Um, you just hook up the base station to your Xbox, put on the, the headset, and you're good to go. Uh, if you do, however, want to use any like Xbox Live voice communication, whatever it is, um, you have to pl plug in a cable into the controller, going from your headset into the controller. So it's basically a similar experience to when you're using a Wii mode and a nunchuck. Your peripherals that you got on your own, like they're connected, but you're not connect. It's still wireless. You're not not connected to a TV or uh, to the base station itself. It's just that um, due to the nature of the Xbox, the, in, uh, the voice communication has to go through the controller. So there's really no way around that. Um, what it does, uh, the base station is basically the core piece of the entire product because uh, that's where the DSP sits where, that does the virtualization of the surround sound. Mm -hmm. um, you can hook up to four headsets to that base station. Uh, so if you want to play with friends and you want to use headsets, that's fine. You can just do that. Um, it also has an audio pass through so you can hook up your uh, TV and uh, entertainment system um, yeah, TV or uh, home theater entertainment system to um, the base station and then um, when you switch on your headset it will switch off the TV or home like the audio on the home uh, on the TV or home theater um, and when you switch it off again it will uh, switch back the audio on the TV again so there's no like hassling with plugging something in and out and whatnot it's just you plug, switch it on switch it off and uh, it will Will always work that the way you want it to. Obviously, they have some equalizing functions on, on the uh, on the uh, base station as well. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the headset and some done. Cool. Yeah. Now, is it um, is it 7.1, 5.1? It's a 5.1 virtual surround sound. Okay, so 5.1 virtual surround sound made for consoles. Correct. Um, now, is it compatible with everything only the Xbox or? Um, it's most likely just going to be Xbox, correct?